Hey everybody, we have moved. It must be springtime because we're moving away from the fireplace and we're going to the kitchen table. So this is probably my favorite place in any house is the kitchen table, right? You can eat a lot of good food. You can get a lot of projects done. It's a great place to be. So that's where I'm at tonight here at Abel Church. Um, as we're doing Keeping It Real, I'm Matt, of course. And the theme this week is working with Jesus and not against him. So that's a big topic to discuss. So I thought we'd review a little bit from last week to help us, uh, maybe that'll help us understand this topic a little bit better. So do you remember what our message was? It was called Living in Victory. And we talked about how the ground was cursed due to the fall of man back in the beginning of Genesis. But if we trust God, even though the ground is cursed, he will provide for us. And we see that with farmers. Now, you might be saying, how can I live in victory when I struggle with a disability? I'm going to have this disability all my life, and how am I going to deal with that? I just don't understand this message about living in victory. Well, Tim is sharing from Matthew 12 today, and something in that chapter can help us in tough times, and also we'll learn how we can work with God and not against him. So here we go, Matthew 12, starting verse 22. A man controlled by demons was brought to Jesus. The man was blind and could not speak. Jesus healed him. Then the man could speak and see. All the people were amazed. They said, could this be the son of David? The Pharisees heard this. So they said, this fellow drives out demons by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons. And we just want to make it clear here that uh, when they're talking about Beelzebub, that's a fancy name for Satan. So the Pharisees claim that Satan healed the demonically possessed man. What do you think? Can Satan heal someone possessed by a demon? Considering Satan's nature of being a liar, he cannot. So what does Jesus have to say about this? What, what just happened? Well, uh, we read in Matthew 12, verses 25 through 28, Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he said to them, Every kingdom that fights against itself will be destroyed. Every city or family that is divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he fights against himself. Then how can his kingdom stand? You say, I drive out demons by the power of Beelzebub. Then... By whose power do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But suppose I drive out demons by the Spirit of God. Then the kingdom of God has come to you. Jesus says here that Satan can't get rid of demons or he would be fighting against himself. And if people were able to drive out demons, they would be our judges. And if Jesus drives out demons, God will be our judge. So my question is, who do you want to be your judge? God or Satan? And well, I would say God, because if we let Satan judge us, we're going to be in big trouble. We're going to be slaves for the rest of our lives. And if God is our judge, he, he's forgiving. And, and as long as we, we choose to follow him and honor him, he will forgive us of our sins. So that's the kind of judge that I want. So anyway, Jesus makes this even more clear in the next verse, which says, or think about this. How can you enter a strong man's house and just take what that man owns? You must first tie him up then you can rob his house. Now, Jesus isn't telling us to rob houses here, but he's using this example as a way to describe how he defeats Satan. All this brings us to this week's theme, which is working with Jesus and not against him. This is the, one of the verses that Tim will be sharing tonight. Matthew 12, verses, uh, verse 30 from the New Living Translation. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. And I read this verse and I realize we can be on one of two teams and we have to choose. We can be on Team Satan, which means you might feel good, and you might have fun, but you're actually possessed and enslaved to sin. Or you could be on Team Jesus and you'll face challenges. You might get some good times in your life, but you'll, 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 def you'll definitely be challenged as well. But you will have God on your side to help you grow. And we can only be in one kingdom. So who whose will we be in, God's or Satan's? So... I would definitely want to be, as I mentioned earlier, on God's team because he, he has a plan for our life. He wants to see us succeed and he wants us to have abundant goodness in our lives. That's, a, that's just unlimited good things in our lives. And he can bless us with those and help us grow and to appreciate them. So I just want to take a moment to pray for you guys if you're struggling on, on, and if you want to be on God's team. And I think you do, but we just need some encouragement with that because that definitely brings some challenges to our lives. So Lord, uh, uh, thank you for this time together, teaching us about the importance of being on your team. We know that'll bring challenges. We know that we live in a world that 
is against your word, but we know that your way is the right way and your way will keep us safe. And help us to stay on that path even when it's difficult. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, that's all I have for you on this topic about uh, being with Jesus and not against him. So I'm looking forward to hearing Tim expound on this next here at the Able Church. Hello, Able Church. It's Tim and Janice back to you once again with another Able Church uh, hour. And uh, we want to thank you all for tuning in. We're so excited always to be with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping that, uh, well, at some time in the future, we'll be back together live. Yes. And that's always our hope. And uh, At least the things are moving in the right direction with the COVID and people yeah. getting vaccinated and things like that. So hope is on the horizon that you know before long we'll be able to get back together again but not yet <laughs> well we want to give a special shout out tonight for one of our friends josh over at the shano apartments josh i hope you're doing well and uh actually i hope everyone's doing well but we uh spoke to josh this week and we just want to encourage him and all of our friends at the shano apartments so uh tonight we have a message that i think is always important it's working with jesus and not against him so I think this message, Janice, is important because we don't want to find ourselves working against the things that Jesus is trying to establish here on this earth. And part of that is just knowing and acknowledging him as a part of our lives so that he can work through us and advance his kingdom. That's really the goal or should be the goal of each one of us. Right. And you think about it. I always want to be on the winning side. <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah. we know definitely Jesus is on the winning side. So if we're not on his side, if we don't join his team, we're in big trouble. Yeah. In fact, I think Jesus had some words to speak about this. Oh, yeah. Uh, going uh, to the scripture found in Matthew twelve thirty. if you want to read that. Sure. It says, anyone, and again, this is Jesus speaking. It says, anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. All right. So, yeah. So anyone who isn't for Jesus is actually working against him. Now, that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Uh, so sometimes we know that uh, we can be like silent about who Jesus is. And here Jesus is kind of making it clear that we really can't be silent about who he is to us. Right. There's an expression we use about sitting on the fence where we can't make up our mind which side we want to be on and we sit on the fence. With Jesus, there's no sitting on the fence, you know. And I think it's important as, as followers of Jesus, we need to make a decision beforehand, not when we're put in a tough circumstance. We need to know in advance how we're going to respond in a situation like it should just be an automatic response well of course i'm a follower of jesus Absolutely. we shouldn't even have to think about it that's the yeah. point we want to be at yeah we should be firm in our convictions of who jesus is to us mm -hmm. and often we will uh, use testimonies as a way of kind of speaking our faith to other people and so i, I remember back in the days at able church when we were together sometimes people would come and share how they got to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's a great thing because I think it really builds our faith up to tell others about how we came to know him as our Lord and Savior. So that's that's a great thing, very, right. very worthwhile. So bottom line is we need to make up our minds about Jesus and where we stand yes. with him. And we can't be wishy-washy. Well, it's either yes or no. We're with him or we're against him. There's yeah. no maybe or middle of the road. It's right. one way or the other. We're not neutral about this subject. That's right. We? Yeah. So, you know, and sometimes people don't want to take sands because they don't want to be criticized. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we've come to the place with our group as we've been talking about this subject on and off that uh, we are going to be criticized. Yeah. You know, because as we come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we have to know that mm -hmm. some people are just not going to like that. Right. They're not going to like that we've taken a stand to support Jesus mm -hmm. and to make him Lord and Savior of our lives. So when you think about it, he's the most important thing to us, right? So why wouldn't we talk about him? But even in that discussion with other people, talking about Jesus is going to be considered offensive to some people. Mm -hmm. And we know that the times we live in, 
that's becoming harder to do, isn't it? Right. You know, and I think the reason some people want to sit the fence is they might be a little bit ashamed of Jesus. And you have to you have to ask yourself, are you ashamed of Jesus? And if you are, why? Because it really makes no mm. sense to be ashamed of him when you think about what he has done. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have everything to be thankful for in terms of what Jesus has done for us. So there is no, uh, or should be no feelings of shame in terms of what Jesus means to us. In fact, there's a, a mm. scripture found in Luke that's very yeah. important for us to understand about this whole idea of feeling shame uh, whatsoever concerning Jesus. And Luke 9, 26 says this, Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his own shining greatness and of the fathers and of the holy angels. Wow, that's a, that's a tough word. Oh, man. You know, if we, if we make it sound like we are ashamed of Jesus here on this earth, Jesus said well, he's going to be ashamed of us standing before the Father. I never want to be in that situation where oh, Jesus man. says, I don't know that Janice, or I'm ashamed of her. You know, that would, I, I never want to hear that. I'd rather take the risk of being called a, a Jesus freak or a religious freak or whatever um, here on this earth than take any chance oh, yeah. of Absolutely. Jesus saying, I'm ashamed of Janice. Yeah. I, I, I don't want that ever to happen. No, and there's a scripture found in Romans 1, 16 that goes right along with this. Oh, why don't you read that, Janice? Sure. Um, it says, um, make sure I've got the right one here. Um, I want everyone to know that I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ Jesus. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first, and also the Gentile. All right. You know what? I, one of the things I like about mm -hmm. that it, it talks about the gospel in there. It, some versions use the word gospel, but this one uses the word good news. And what that tells us, that the gospel of Jesus, the story of Jesus and why he came is good news. Absolutely. So why why would we be ashamed to tell people good news? I That's what, yeah. what I'm saying. This whole notion of being ashamed of Jesus doesn't make sense. Yeah. It's, it's good news. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And then there's other people, and this is probably more uh, a guy thing. I don't know. But it's, I, I'm too cool uh -huh. to proclaim Jesus my Lord and Savior. You know, because we, you know, us guys, we're just all about this cool factor. Macho. You know? and... Macho, yeah, sure. So I don't want anybody to think that I am dependent on some someone else, mm -hmm. like Jesus. You know, I'm just, I'm doing my own thing because I'm, I'm kind of a cool guy. Well, I think people that have that attitude are really confused on their whole purpose for being here. Yeah. Why they exist, why they're on the earth, what is the purpose of their life? Do you know what the purpose of your life is? And that's what really brings us to a point of not being ashamed of Jesus and actually being proud of him and wanting to tell others about him. And once again, we have a scripture talks about this. It's found in 1 Peter 2, 9, if you would read that, please. Sure. It says, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Wow. Again, it goes back to what we said earlier about what Jesus did for us. Right. You know, if, if we can't appreciate all the things that Jesus did for us and feel shame in place of gratitude, Wow, we're really confused, aren't we? Right. So, I mean, first of all, we all know that Jesus died for our sins. Absolutely. That's, that's a big thing. But in that verse that I just read, listen to the how Jesus and how God looks at us. He looks at us as a chosen people. He chose us as a royal priesthood, a wow. holy nation, his special possession. I mean, he's looking at us with such favor and goodness. And he did all this so that we would acknowledge him and that we would call him our Lord and our Savior and acknowledge him as Lord. Right. And give him the glory that's due to him. Really, and that's the bottom line, what this verse is telling, what he's looking for from us is for us to praise him. That's not that hard. No. <laughs> Actually, it's, a, it's quite easy because there's so many reasons to praise him. So that's our calling is to praise the Lord. Uh, well, I think that maybe 
if we get to a point where we can't praise God and give him honor and glory, then I, I have to even question whether we really even know Jesus right, as right. our Lord and Savior. Because, you know, out of the, the, the sacrifice that he made for us and out of gratitude for all he's done for us, we should be willing to give him such high glory mm -hmm. and honor that we should be proud and willing to share that with most anyone. Right. That's so the bottom line. Let's just go back to the what we said, that verse that we read earlier in, in the beginning of this message, where Jesus said, anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. So I think we really have to come, and each of us needs to take and ask ourselves, where are we at with our relationship with Jesus? And have we surrendered our lives to him? And if we haven't, why haven't we, you know? Yes, because when you think about it, he has given us the greatest gift that anyone could ever mm -hmm. give us. So we, you know, we celebrate gift givings for Christmas or birthdays or any number of occasions. And, and who doesn't want a gift? I mean, we, we, <laughs> we all look forward to those things. But when you think about it, the greatest gift that we will ever possess uh, this side of heaven is really our salvation. Right, absolutely. And, and you think about it, we are all sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says. So we're all sinners. So that sin has to be paid for. Yeah. God doesn't just wink his eye and say, okay, we'll let that sin slide. It has to be paid for. So either I'm going to pay for it, you're going to pay for your sin, or we let Jesus. And the way we... The way sin is paid for is through death. So either we're going to die for yeah. our sins or Jesus died for them. So whose payment do you want to accept? <laughs> well, I surely want to make sure that we all know that we're sinners, first of all, mm -hmm. that we've all sinned. You know, it's not, it's not like we've sinned maybe once or twice in our lives. I probably sinned once or twice today already or more. You know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But, you know, it... it we have to acknowledge the fact that we're sinners. Like, yeah. like you said, Romans uh, 6.23 says, all have fallen short of the glory of God. So we know we're sinners. Yes. And we have to uh, come to that place where we know that the only place that we can give that sin uh, a place of forgiveness is through the blood of Jesus. Right. So that's the way that we come to the Father. That's the way we come into perfection because one day, when we take our last breath and we go to heaven, we can't stand before our Heavenly Father with sin, you know, on our hearts. Mm -hmm. He won't accept us. No, he, he can't have sin in his presence. No, so our perfect. sin has to be dealt with. So, you know, you think about the tremendous price that Christ paid to get that forgiveness for us. Right. And you think, why wouldn't we be grateful for such a gift that we were deserving of hell, or we still are deserving of hell, but Christ paid our sin for our sins. He took the penalty we deserve. Yeah. And if we put our faith in him, then we are spared that death sentence. He took it for us. You know, and I think too, um, you know, Christ, uh, Christ Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit created a, a one-time paradise for Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And then sin entered into uh, the human race, and suddenly this place of paradise is no longer available to Adam and Eve. And that was such a sad day when you think about it. It was it was a horrible day. That sin now dominated what mankind was all about. And I have to think that Adam and Eve, first of all, had to be the greatest uh, regretters of sin ever. Oh, yeah. Because they're the ones that saw paradise disappear. But you know, it was so beautiful that God recreated opportunities mm -hmm. for mankind to be in paradise once again. And that wouldn't be a garden here on earth, but that was a place in heaven. So he makes a way mm -hmm. for us to be once again reestablished in this place of paradise where I don't know. You know the Bible says that man has never seen men has not seen, nor have we heard, nor has it even entered into our hearts the things which God has prepared for us in this paradise in heaven. Right, right. So 
you know, the way I look at it is what more could God do for us? So first he created paradise, put man in paradise, man messed up. And so was taken out of paradise. But now God comes back and says, okay, I'll make another way for you to regain paradise. Right. And so what more could he do for us? I just think it's, um, it's an amazing kind of love that he has for us. Yeah. But, but it does demand a response on our part. It does. And it goes back to our original um, whole issue of not being ashamed of Jesus. Right. So Jesus gave his life. The Father sent him. Uh, they set up this home for us in paradise in heaven mm -hmm. so that when we take our last breath here on this earth, we'll have this eternal home of, I don't know how to describe it even, but anyway, mm -hmm. you know, our hearts should be overflowing with gratitude and, and thankfulness toward what Jesus did primarily because of the, the blood that he shed and the sacrifice he made. So I hope none of us tonight are ashamed of what Jesus right. did for us. All right. And I think we, it comes down to, to me, the bottom line is you have to make up your mind. I have to make up my mind. We all have to make up our mind. Who are we going to follow? You got two choices. You can follow Satan and he comes to steal, kill and destroy. So if that's what you want to experience, destruction and death, you follow him. Mm -hmm. Or you can follow Jesus who said he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Those are the options, folks. There's no middle ground. It's Jesus or Satan. We're going with one or the other. And that doesn't mean that life's going to be perfect here on this earth. Oh, no. We know quite the contrary that, you know, people are going to make fun of us, mm -hmm. really, as Christians. But uh, that doesn't deter me. But, I'm, you know, life is short. And that little bit of uh, being made fun of in, in compared to eternity, that's going to mean yeah, nothing. It is. It is. And whatever sacrifices we make here on this earth is nothing compared to the great reward that God has waiting That's right. for us. That's so, right. Janice, we, every Friday night, make a way for people to know that they have that security mm -hmm. of knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a home waiting mm -hmm. for them in heaven. It's not a complicated thing. You know, we don't have to work for those things. We don't have to jump through any fiery hoops or read any long books or do any long service program. None of those things are required. It's putting our faith in Jesus, yeah, which is going to lead to those good things. But ultimately, it's what Jesus did and not what we do. That's the payment. Yeah. And that's why we're so grateful to him. But uh, let's say our salvation prayer so that if there's somebody watching tonight that's never said that prayer, they too sure. can say the prayer after us. They yeah. can make a decision yes. one way or the other, which way they're going to go in life. Absolutely. So let's say that prayer together. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I'm a sinner, and I need a savior. And I need a savior. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my savior. Be my savior. Forgive me of my sins. And forgive me of my sins. That I could have a relationship with you. That I can have a relationship with you forevermore. Forevermore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. If you said that prayer for the first time, give us a shout out. Post something on Facebook with us and let us know that you said the prayer so we can celebrate with you. And we pray this day that no one who knows Jesus would ever feel ashamed of the gospel or of knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So until next week, God bless. I hope you're all doing well, and we'll see you soon.